Welcome to Beating Cancer Daily. Beating stage four cancer for 30 years still takes my breath away every time I say it. I'm Saren, founder of the Comedy Cures Foundation, and I hope you'll join me for just a few minutes daily for the next 365 days so we may laugh, learn, maybe cry a little as we live our best days beating cancer daily together. I just came back from talking about beating cancer daily to probably 300 people. So Jackie said my voice sounds kind of (laughs) sexy. It's got a Demi Moore feel to it. (laughs) So if you've never listened to Beating Cancer Daily, don't mistake me for like an R&B DJ right now. This is... (laughs) This is not about sexy love songs. We're actually going to be talking to one of my favorite people who comes back to this podcast once a week. And it's such an honor to have her. She is a functional medicine expert, a certified nutrition specialist, a whole health educator, RN, and just one of the superstars of Beating Cancer Daily, Jackie Bryan, with her nutrition wisdom for all of us. <laughs> Welcome, Jackie. So I just love coming here. One, it's so awesome to spend time with you, but also you just make me feel so good. Thank you for that lovely introduction. <laughs> now, I saw a t-shirt that made me laugh. And if you've listened many times, you know, I am obsessed with fun t-shirts. And this one said, I'm sorry for what I said before I had my ashwagandha. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I thought of you because she texted me during this big conference that I went to. And she said, how about ashwagandha? Let's talk about ashwagandha. And I was so busy that I didn't have time to really absorb it. And then I stumbled across this t-shirt. I think my phone listens to our conversations, Jackie, because all <laughs> of a sudden everything about ashwagandha started flooding my phone. <laughs> and I was like, well, you oh know, my it's- gosh. It, I get inspired. So I, I, so many individuals that I interact with each and every day inspire me. And I had a client that wrote to me and, and that person asked me, should I be taking ashwagandha? And they're, they're living with cancer right now. And so that was one of the things that I felt might be a really good thing for us to talk about, because I think there are so many different types of things that we can take, whether it be in food, supplement, tea form, powder, whatever. And and it's hard to determine what it is that we should be taking. And I do think our cancer community and population is very vulnerable, right? Because we're scared. We're, we're in a situation where we're trying to do the right things for our body, but then we're inundated with information. Take this, take that. And then the media, very well-intended friends and other people are suggesting all these things. And so I thought it'd be fun just to talk through this ashwagandha herb. I agree with you. And I think that's why I'm so grateful that you come back to Beating Cancer Daily. I think you're over 50 episodes already out of the 300 plus that we've done because this is so dizzying. And I don't know if you ever had anyone like this, but did you ever come across somebody that had gone through cancer treatment and they were almost like a bully about what you have to do? Like they are so insistent because it worked for them and they could be super well-intentioned, but they never stopped hounding you about doing exactly what they did. And it might not work for you. So we don't sell herbs. We don't promote any one brand of anything. We just want you to always go and check with your medical team to see if this is good for you with the protocol that you're doing. And Jackie's just a world-respected certified nutrition specialist. So I really listen when she presents something to me, but I always go back to my doctor and see if it's right for me. So just let's learn and then let's see if this will work for us. I think you just coined a new phrase though, a cancer bully. 
<laughs> I do. I'm like, I've never heard that before. But you know, it's really funny. And first of all, you you prefaced that statement with the perfect thing to say, which was they were well intended, right? So I, I believe that everybody that is trying to support another person on their on their cancer journey is well intended, right? They're they're coming in with the 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 right intentions. They're trying to be supportive, but again we're all snowflakes. We are all different. And what works for one may not work for another. What might be beneficial to one type of cancer could be not so great for another type of cancer. And that's why it's so important to have a conversation with your medical team. And so I I think it's always helpful for us to do a little role playing to practice how we respond to those really pushy people that are saying, this is what you should be doing, right? And you just respectfully thank them for their tips. And then you kind of do what feels right to you or what is best, or or maybe you research what they said. It could be that their tips or advice for you might be beneficial. I think we should use you, Jackie, as our, as our excuse. I have to check with my certified nutrition specialist, Jackie. <laughs> I gotta check. That's gonna be a lot of phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I just mean that. Okay, I'm gonna go back to beating cancer daily and look in the index and see if Jackie talked about it. And then I'm gonna listen to that episode. And then I'm it's gonna okay. decide if it's good for me. And then I'm gonna reach out to my medical team. <laughs> Well, I, I appreciate it. I think it is just so important to double check because there are certain things and ashwagandha is one of them that can be contraindicated with certain medications, right? So we haven't even gotten into talking about what ashwagandha is besides it being a mouthful to say, right? I love the way it feels <laughs> in my mouth. I don't know why, <laughs> but I like the way all the different points of my tongue and my palate, like it feels this is going to sound so weird, but it feels kind of sexy when you say it. <laughs> so I'm excited to find out the benefits. Right. We should have a little race to say it like 10 times fast so we can do it the best. <laughs> but I'm actually going to start off this sort of discussion a little bit backwards. I'm going to say the people that sh- probably should not take the ashwagandha. And I, the only reason I'm going to say that is because I think it's just important to know that it's not right for everybody. So pregnant women, people that are breastfeeding, people that are on diabetes medication, blood pressure medications, thyroid issues, hyperthyroid, people that are undergoing surgery that might require general anesthesia, and even people with autoimmune conditions like MS, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, all of those are things that you really need to double check with your, your physician before consuming ashwagandha. So again, that's a big population, but I just wanted to kind of start off with that. And then I want to tell you like how super sexy ashwagandha is, right? Like, <laughs> so <laughs> wait a second. I have lower blood sugar mm-hmm. and I heard that it can drop your blood sugar. It, that's one of the reasons that if you are a diabetic or on medication for diabetes, which can keep your blood sugar low, that you want to be careful with it, right? And again, everybody's a snowflake. Finding what is the best solution for you is going to be is going to be really important. And we kind of like backed our way into this discussion. We haven't even told everybody <laughs> what ashwagandha is. So let me. So ashwagandha. Let's do a whole episode <laughs> where we Backwards. never talk about it. <laughs> And then at the very end, we say what it is. No, no, I'm just kidding. So if here's the thing, if you feel confused right now, it's okay, right? Because we we haven't really told you any, we haven't really told you anything, but, but ashwagandha is an adaptogenic herb, right? And it's, it's actually been, it's an ancient medicinal herb, meaning it's an herb that's been used medicinally for centuries by Ayurvedic medicine. And it's referred to as that adaptogenic herb because it means that it helps the body cope with stress. It helps it maintain this homeostatic balance in your body, right? So there's certain herbs and plants that are adaptogenic and things like turmeric, which we've talked about in the past, Cordyceps mushrooms, Siberian ginseng, those are other ones. But we're we're talking about ashwagandha today. And and ashwagandha is the the thing that we're just kind of focusing in on because one, somebody inspired me because we we started talking about it. But there are certain health benefits to ashwagandha. And one of them is stress reduction. It can help reduce stress and anxiety by regulating cortisol levels. And as 
you might recall, cortisol is the hormone that is secreted by the adrenal glands that sit on top of the kidneys. And that that cortisol ramp up can really increase anxiety. And so ashwagandha can also help kind of calm the body and help facilitate better sleep and relaxation, which is great. You know what I love when you describe something and I can literally say, so does laughter, Jackie. Yes. <laughs> I can quote the same studies about cortisol and laughter. And if you don't know, I started the Comedy Cures Foundation by throwing a chemo comedy party from my first chemo treatment. And I've been able to bring comedians and laughter, joy around the world. So when laughter could do the same thing that an herb or a pill or something can do. I'm so excited. Like I have to take that moment to celebrate <laughs> laughter. Your own body can do this too. And if it you is, it's amazing. Yeah. It and so I was going to say, if you haven't looked at the metastatic cancer mindset study that I did, we showed that laughing and doing really good daily practices for your mental health could literally reduce depression, reduce stress, reduce anxiety, and increase self-empowerment. So this is exciting that if you like taking herbs, here's a whole pathway if your doctors approve it. And if you just want to laugh or do that in combination, here we go. Well, I like that approach, Sarah, because you're a whole person, right? And so laughter is super important. I mean, it, it's that inner jogging for your body. It's releasing all those chemicals that, like you said, is going to reduce stress. It's got anti-inflammatory effects. But but the beauty is that we use laughter and we can use food, nutrition, we can use quality sleep, all of those things to really surround ourselves with, with behaviors that are going to help us heal, right? And that's what the that's what the purpose of this whole journey is, is to find a way to heal. I think you hit it on the head. The reason why beating cancer daily, I believe is reaching people in 85 countries is that not every one strategy is going to resonate with you. And now there are hundreds of ideas for you to try so that you can build your own unique healthcare plan. And hopefully create a wellness environment in mind, body, and spirit that's going to help you get through this journey as easily and as quickly as possible. But these are long-term strategies too, just to mm -hmm. keep yourself well. And I know we have a lot of caregivers listening and mm -hmm. you're under a lot of stress. So I'm excited, Jackie. Is this in a T form? I don't even know how it you is. get this. Yeah, yeah. So you, again, jumping ahead. Right? That's what you always, I, I, need to, I need to send you, I need to send you an outline and say, okay, Saren, this is the order we're going in today. Because <laughs> yeah. so far we've started, we've started backwards today, right? We've started, we've, we've gone all over the place, but, but, but just to answer your question, yes, you can make ashwagandha tea. You can actually just steep the dried ashwagandha roots or leaves in hot water. And for most people, providing you're not in those categories, we talked about having a cup of this a day is considered safe, but it's all, it is available in supplements. They're, they're available in powders and, and liquid. And you, you really want to make sure that you're choosing the best quality supplements from a very reputable place. But, but the powders are pretty popular because some people will put them into their yogurt or into their smoothie, right? So I was waiting for you to those. say <laughs> smoothie. And then it's like, ding, 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 ding. And then I get to say, Jackie made the best smoothie episode. <laughs> you will learn how to make the best smoothie if you search in our index and you just write smoothie. S-M-O-O-T-H-I-E, if you are not an English as a first language speaker, and you will learn how to make the best movie. And if this is right for you, if this is indicated for you to do, just pop it in one of those beautiful smoothies Jackie told yeah, us how to yeah, make. Yeah, just pop it all in there. There's a lot that you can cram into those smoothies for sure. One of the, one of the reasons that I was asked by a survivor about ashwagandha is because ashwagandha can and and has been shown to enhance the immune system's response to infections and really help the body defend against illnesses which is which is pretty amazing again 
always check with your doctor because there are contraindications to taking ashwagandha, even in a tea form with certain medications. But they, the herb does have compounds that have this anti-inflammatory property that can reduce inflammation and support overall health and boost your immune system. I mean, all of those things are pretty amazing. I've been pretty vocal about doing Tibetan medicine and did all my Western medicine surgeries, radiation, chemotherapies, but also had the honor to work with the Dalai Lama's doctor for years. And in Tibetan medicine, it doesn't work right away. It has mm-hmm. to build in your system. Yes. So mm-hmm. I'm just curious, is this similar where it's not like you're going to take it the first day and all of a sudden, ooh, I'm going to feel great and all my inflammation is going to go away? <laughs> or is, is no, this it's, that it's has not to build? like... Yeah, I mean, we're we are a society that we have a pill for every ill, and and that's not what this is, right? So you take a a Tylenol, and that gets rid of your headache in twenty minutes to to an hour. This is something that kind of builds up in your system, and your and your and and it's actually a good thing because it's it's in a natural state for the most part, as long as you don't have any reason why you shouldn't be taking it. But but what's interesting is because ashwagandha can help find balance in the body or or homeostasis, it is one way that we can actually naturally increase our energy levels and our stamina, because once you reduce the stress in your body, your body does not become as fatigued and it can really boost overall vitality. So I think that's pretty, pretty interesting. But, but again, like you said, it's not something that happens immediately, right? It's something that happens over time. And, and the magic question might be, well, how long, Jackie? And it's going to be different. It's going to be different based on how much you're taking, what your body size is, what your metabolism is like, how old you are, what your disease condition is. There's lots of factors that go into determining how your body is going to respond to a particular adaptogenic herb such as ashwagandha. I will say that there are studies that are suggesting that ashwagandha can support cognitive function and memory by promoting nerve cell growth and protecting your brain cells from oxidative stress, which I think is pretty amazing because we are seeing a higher increase in cognitive issues such as dementia and Alzheimer's. And and this is something that we want to be able to protect our our brain. And, and this is possibly a part that you could bring into your diet, providing you don't have some of those contra indications that we discussed earlier. I think it's also really important to know when you should stop taking something. Mm -hmm. So to be very aware. So some of the things that might signal to you, like, Hey, is it like, Hey, this is causing diarrhea or I'm getting nauseated or vomiting. Are yes. those things, are there things that we could think about that would say, hey, this isn't right for your body? So you would Yeah, know- that's a really, that's an awesome point, right? So there are things that can happen when we're taking ashwagandha. There are side effects. Digestive and, and nausea and gut issues are typically the thing that can be somewhat problematic, right? So most People, as long as you don't have those other issues we talked about that are contraindicated, say that taking one cup of ashwagandha tea every day for six months is considered safe. But there are some GI upset things like diarrhea and vomiting that can happen. And if it does happen, you need to stop drinking it right away. I I really like it when people do food journals. And and that's because you can connect the dots much easier. So in my practice, I have an app that people can actually track their food intake and their symptoms. And it just makes it so much easier to connect the dots between a lifestyle and a, and a symptom. And and it might be that you're saying, oh gosh, maybe this was causing that, that whole cause and effect is, is really helpful to figure it out. Well, that's what I like about your website is that you can just get so much information just running through the website, but also Jackie does have a group membership and a private practice. So if this is something that you want to explore, I'll give you the information of how to get to Jackie. And even if you just go look at the website, you'll be more educated when you leave. (laughs) And the other thing is Jackie and I try to meet live on Zoom almost once a month and do something called the Health Builder webinar. And so it's free. 
you can go to comedycures.org, look on our homepage and just sign up for it. It's a few questions and then we give you the Zoom link and you just come. It's 45 minutes. Jackie presents on a topic and then you can ask questions. We're live. So if you have questions specific about the topic, we're both there to field them. And it's a really nice community that you can just pop on and learn more from Jackie. And of course, go back through all these episodes. It's It really is like a master class in nutrition and keeping your organs healthy. So I just really want to thank you, Jackie, for doing that. It's so much fun. I love the Health Builder series. I love being a part of this community because as I'm a 21-year breast cancer survivor, you're 31 years as a stage four cancer survivor. And it feels so good to give back to the community. And I so wish I had you 21 years ago, Sarah. I, I wish was, I had you 31 years ago. Oh, Holy like, moly. Yeah. I wasn't born then though. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I, I, I think it's cancer can feel so lonely. And even though you're surrounded by people and love and support, it just feels lonely sometimes. And it feels hard to identify with other people that aren't going through it. Not that you want any of your loved ones going through it. It's just, I think this podcast and even the health builder programs that we're doing gives a safe space for individuals to listen, to learn, to engage. Should they choose to engage, they don't have to engage but, I but think we that's love most... when you do. We love when you <laughs> go know. to comedycares.org and write to us. We got an unbelievable voice message through the podcast. If you go to the podcast section and you hit record, you can actually talk to us. And the message that we got yesterday was just so amazing from a listener. And I just want to thank you for bringing a suggestion to us. We're going to research it. And then also just for telling us how you're using the podcast, but Jackie, you hit it on the head. That's why this is daily because it gives you a way to connect with this community and learn and not feel so alone every day. Just feel like you're doing something that can help you on this journey and survivorship too. So thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. And then paying it forward. Right. So we, you and I know what it feels like to be in that situation where we've received this terrible diagnosis and gone through treatment. And then now being able to offer and help other people going through it, it just, it, it, it's, it's very fulfilling for me. I know as a survivor, as a, as a person who has a family and also as a professional, right? So it's, thanks for helping me feel so good, Sarah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I wanted to just say, (laughs) Aren't you curious? Where does the name ashwagandha come from? Okay, it's a combination of the Sanskrit words ashva, meaning horse, and ganda, meaning smell. And the reason why is because the root of this bush smells like a horse. It's got a strong horse-like odor. So that's where it gets the horse root from. But did you notice in the spelling that it ends with H-A? Ha! <laughs> and you know that anytime I see a word with ha in it, it's a big screaming bulletin board for me that I'm supposed to look deeper into this and that it also must have something to do with laughter. And the impact of this herb that's used, I mean, all over, it grows in India, it grows in the Middle East, it grows in parts of Africa, that we're supposed to use this because it's supposed to help us laugh more. And if you're relaxed and you're happy and you're less depressed, then that gives us the opportunity to laugh more. And you know, laughter is contagious. And when we laugh, all these beautiful things happen in our mind, body, and spirit. So this ashwagandha, I think it could help us not only with our comic perspective, but also help us have the best quality day possible. And I'm going to say ashwagandha. 
(laughs) (laughs) I'm going to laugh when I think it, and I'm going to laugh when I say it. Or why else would ha be at the end? There is so much humor about ashwagandha online. If you are on TikTok, I think it's one of the top topics. I don't know whether because it's funny to say or so many people are taking it and they want to share their experiences, but there is a lot of video humor about ashwagandha. So if you want to do a deep dive into that, send me (laughs) your best, find the best ones and send it to us. So you can go to comedycures.org and hit the record button, as I said in the podcast section, or just go to the menu and the contact button. And you can reach out to us. If you want to find Jackie, it's JackieBryan.com. If you can't find her for some strange reason, then just write to me and I'll send you her signature. It is such an honor to do this with you, Jackie. It is such an honor to meet up with you wherever you are in the 86 countries every day here at Beating Cancer Daily. Have a blessed day and I'll see you tomorrow. If you loved today's episode, then tell the world. Why? Because... Beating Cancer Daily is a listener and donor supported experience. So the more people you tell and the more people that join us, the more robust and interesting programs our nonprofit, the Comedy Cures Foundation, can bring to you throughout the year. So if you have some extra change, I'd love you to go to comedycures.org and make a donation today of whatever level is comfortable for you. And it will be tax deductible to the extent allowed by law because Comedy Cures is a nonprofit 501c3 organization founded from my chemo chair, April 1999. And we've been going strong ever since. So please consider making a donation today and help our community and this podcast thrive. Guess what time it is? It's time for me to read the disclaimer. Beating Cancer Daily and the Membership Circle are not in lieu of medical advice or treatment. They are for entertainment purposes only. Please consult your healthcare team to review your best strategy. Thanks for listening. See you guys tomorrow.